Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show again how to find an eigenvector using the approximation method. In this case, we're going to hold a little bit more true to the, hmm, the formal way of writing these things. In other words, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the original vector A times a starting vector. Let's call that x sub 0. So x sub 0 is my original, but what we might guess what we might call the guest eigenvector, we're going to call it 1 and 1. We call it 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Maybe I'm lucky, and that's the actual eigenvector. We would know then that if I multiply this matrix times 1, 1, and I get 1, 1 back, then I found the actual eigenvector. Well, let's see what happens. So we're going to multiply A times the vector, x sub naught. So this is 2 minus 12, 1 minus 5 and multiply that times 1, 1. And let's see what we end up with. So this is 2 minus 12, that's minus 10. And here we get 1 minus 5, which is minus 4. Notice that is a 2 and a half to 1 ratio, right? 10 divided by 4 is 2 and a half to 1. So this is called the x sub 1 vector, and this is, this is equal to a ratio of 2.5 to 1. All right, now let's plug this in here for our second multiplication, a times the next vector, x sub 1, that would be equal to 2 minus 12, 1 minus 5, and the new vector, which is minus 10 minus 4, and that equals, that's minus, let's see here, minus 20 plus 48, that's 28, and minus 10 plus 20 is 10. So now we see that we have 28 and 10, which is a 2.8 to 1 ratio. So this is our x2 vector, and now we can see that the ratio is 2.8 to 1. I'm beginning to suspect that my eigenvector is 3 and 1 because it seems to be converging to something like that. But let me go one more step and see what happens. I'm now going to multiply my a vector times x2. So that's equal to 2 minus 12, 1 and minus 5, and multiply that times 28 and 10, 28 and 10, which is equal to, so we have 56 minus 120, that's minus 64, and here we have 28 minus 50, 28 minus 50 is uh, minus 22, right? 28 minus 50, minus 22. All right, that is equal to x3. Of course, if I continue the process, I would have a times x3 and so forth, but now the ratio, and again, it doesn't matter if it's negative, we can multiply the top and bottom by negative one and make it positive, but 64 divided by 22 is 2.91 to one. So this ratio now becomes 2.91 to 1, and you can see that I'm getting closer and closer to a 3 to 1 ratio. I'm really beginning to suspect that my eigenvector is 3 to 1, so let's check it out. Let's multiply A times what I think is the eigenvector, 3 and 1. Let's see if we end up with a 3 to 1 ratio. So this is 6 minus 12, which is minus 6, and we have 3 minus 5, which is minus 2, and if you multiply both top and bottom by a negative 1 to make it 6 to 2, that is indeed the same as 3 to 1, and that is therefore my eigenvector of this particular matrix. So you can see it's a pretty neat method, and very quickly we tend to zero in on something that looks like, ah, I know what the eigenvector is, let me give it a quick try, and here it is, that didn't take very long, that's how it's done.